Here's the 30 second lesson on what legends know. Never practice nunchucks in a crowded room. Never eat chole before a road trip. Always take your shirt off before you are in it. Don't take a call near a swimming pool. And don't forget, saving is not investing. Legends don't just save, they invest in mutual funds. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully. There is much happening in India. New parliament session is opened. There is trouble in Sambal, not far from New Delhi, but also a place with a history, a very sad history of communal rioting in the past, which we thought we had left behind. There is trouble there. There is also trouble to our west, that's in Pakistan, and to our east, that is Bangladesh. So we have to make a choice in terms of what to talk about today. I just thought that today it's better for us, it's more timely to talk about Bangladesh because all of these are developing situations, all of these are important, all of these need insights. Bangladesh, however, because Muhammad Yunus's interim caretaker, whatever you call it, but constitutionally there is no, no such thing in Bangladesh as, as, as an interim government because the previous Prime Minister Haseen, Sheikh Hasina, she had through a constitutional amendment taken out the provision in the constitution that, that allowed for interim government. So this is not really an interim government which is constitutional but it's there. It's an interim arrangement that completed its 100 days after which Muhammad Yunus, the chief advisor, gave some interviews particularly a very important interview and a very intriguing interview to Al Jazeera. I will, I will go over that. The reason, however, why Bangladesh has hit our national headlines, and if you see your TV channels, it's been running all over there, it's because of the arrest of a Hindu monk. Now, this is a Hindu monk called Chenmai Krishnadas Brahmachari. He is the spokesperson or spokesman for Bangladesh Sammilita Sanatani Jagran Jyot. He's, he's a monk of the ISKCON order, International Society of Krishna Consciousness. You see these monks everywhere in the world. In fact, even in Moscow, if you go there, you will find them. If I remember correctly, at least until I went there the last time, they used to also run a restaurant in Moscow, a vegetarian restaurant. And they run these in many parts of Europe and many cities in America as well. So, so this is an internationalized Hindu monkhood or Hindu order. Now that monk has been arrested. He's been arrested on what looks like charges of charges of sedition but almost linked to terrorism and that is what has caused alarm. He's been arrest arrested. He was arrested at Dhaka airport when he was taking a flight not to leave the country. In fact, when I saw the story first, my first reaction was, oh, was he trying to leave the country? No, he wasn't trying to leave the country. He was only flying from Dhaka to Chittagong or what is now called Chattogram. That is where he lives because that is where he heads the order. He's the He's the local head of the order. Now, Hindus in Bangladesh are only 8%. 8% of Bangladesh at the same time is a lot of people. It's a population of 70.3 crore people. 8% becomes 1.38 crore. So, 8% but 1.38 crore Hindus live in Bangladesh. It's a sizable population. They are organized. They've been coming out in protests. You see these pictures of protests. They come with lights. These are very effective protests. And these protests have not been violent at all, not even stone throwing, nothing. However, in one of these protests in October 25 in Dhaka, at a place called Zero Point in Dhaka, where there is a pillow, this is the Swadhinta Stump, sorry, I, I struggle to pronounce it correctly in Bengali, but something like Shadhinta Stambho, right? Uh, pardon my Bengali uh, pronunciation, it was at that pillar, at that pillar, there is a Bangladesh flag. This group of protesters led by this monk, they've been charged with desecrating the Bangladeshi flag by placing the saffron flags, by wrapping the Bangladeshi flag on the pillar, on the, on the independence pillar or Swadhinta Stamp with the saffron flag. And that is the charge on which Dhaka Metropolitan Police's detective branch arrested him and then and then the magistrate has refused to give him bail once the bail was refused then about 2000 of his followers they followed in a procession protesting and then there were protests in dhaka and also in chittagong and there 
the police used tear gas. So those are the pictures you've seen. In fact, the Chittagong Metropolitan Police Chief, Police Commissioner Haseeb Aziz has said that the situation in Chittagong turned chaotic. They had to use tear gas. He says none of the, he claims none of the protesters were injured, but one of his cops was injured. All of this is now in sympathy with and seeking the seeking the release of Chinmay Krishnadas Brahmachari, the divisional organizing secretary of ISKCON in Chittagong. Now this has led to a lot of alarm on the Indian side. On the Indian side because there have been there have been many cases of, of attacks of attacks on Hindus. That is something now acknowledged by international organizations. Also lately I found that some of the international media which earlier had been giving the UNOS administration a long rope because nobody liked, nobody among them liked Sheikh Hasina because she was seen as dictatorial. Now they've also begun to ask questions. So I will share with you two stories from The Economist, two very significant pieces from The Economist. And you can see how from one to the other, The Economist's view has evolved. Even those stories acknowledge that there have been many attacks on the Hindus. Now, what is the scale? What does it actually mean? What does it amount to? The two sides will have their own views, but the fact is that all attacks look ugly. Now, this has drawn immediate protest from India, which you would expect. India has expressed deep concern and the MES spokesperson said, and I quote him, several documented cases of arson and looting of minorities' homes and business establishments, as well as theft and vandalism and desecration of deities and temples. And, this, and then the spokesperson goes on to say, it is unfortunate that while the perpetrators remain at large, charges should be pressed against a religious leader presenting legitimate demands through peaceful gatherings. That said, ISKCON has also risen to the defense of its monk. ISKCON has said that these are baseless terror charges. We are a, we are a peace-loving bhakti movement and we have nothing to do with any terrorism and we view these charges with great concern. That is the turn the Bangladesh situation is taken now. However, under this lies a larger reality. This may be the headline of today. The headline of yesterday might have been the completion of 100 days of the UNUS administration. But between those two headlines lies a larger question. That is, how long did this administration, arrangement, whatever, came in for? On what legitimacy? Which legitimacy can they write for how long? And how long are they going to lead it's such a large country. Bangladesh is not a small country. It's a country of 17.3 crore people with a GDP which is 20% larger than Pakistan's, which is almost 25 crore people now. So how can a country of this size continue on with an interim arrangement? I'm not saying an interim government because Bangladesh's constitution does not allow an interim constitution. And that is what is causing anxiety. Now, two things have happened. One, on the completion of 100 days, Muhammad Yunus gave a long interview to Al Jazeera. Watch this interview. I will share a link with you. In that interview, he's been asked repeatedly by, inter by the interviewer, how long, how long will it take? And he, in a way, suggests that this could go on for four years, up to four years, that he could continue to lead an interim government up to Four years. Now, the major opposition party so far in Bangladesh, which boycotted the last election, and whose leader, Khalida Zia, former prime minister, is now gone overseas for medical treatment for liver cirrhosis. She is 79 years old, about the same age as Sheikh Hasina, who is in exile in, in India. So, Khalida Zia's son has been writing tweets. See this tweet. And he's been demanding elections as soon as possible. I will read some lines from it. As we go along, it's in that situation that the pressure is now mounting on Muhammad Yunus to answer the question as to when he will hold the next elections. So he said to the Al Jazeera interviewer, and I quote from the interview, there are two parallel things going on. One is the preparation for the election and the other is the preparation for all the reforms. It is up to the people, up to the political parties to decide which way to go. We are not a perpetual government. The regular government is for five years. Then he goes on to say that under the constitutional scheme of things so far, the regular government in Bangladesh for five years. The new constitution may say four years, American style, you know. The new constitution may say four years because people want a faster, I mean shorter. People want say 
faster brackets shorter term of government so it should be under four years it may even be less right so nothing's been done with the constitution but is already telling you what the tenure of the new government elected government under the new constitution might be this is beginning to look like a top down process of top down constitution making and then he says it's all a question of what people want however how do you determine what people want is a question which is a leg legitimate one but for which there is no answer except to say i will figure out what the people want from the street he as i told you earlier evaded repeated questions on how long he will stay on but he said and i quote again from the interview four years is the maximum one can draw which means which means he's now said that it's possible that he might continue on for four years bnp Khalid Zia's party wants the elections to be held in June. By the way, if elections are held in June, that is when Mohammed Yunus will turn 85. If he goes on for four more years, he might then become maybe the oldest serving leader in the world. Although what his title will be, I don't know. This is a tricky question because in Pakistan, when Musharraf took, took over after a coup, Musharraf did not want to call himself president or chief marshal or administrator because he knew already in 1999 that armies, generals taking over power was in bad order in the world, particularly in the Western world, whose support Pakistan needed desperately. So he initially called himself chief executive of Pakistan. It's only later when he was coming to India for the Agra summit that he said, you know, I'm going to my going for summit with the prime minister of India. I can't just go as chief executive officer of Pakistan. So I need a formal title. So he pronounced himself president. After all, when you are the big boss, you can do anything with your title. You can write the title you want. Idi Amin, from a mere corporal, became field marshal in his own lifetime and continued to rule, uh, rule his country. That besides, Muhammad Yunus does not have any formal title for governance right now, chief advisor. So will he carry on to be chief advisor till age 88, 89? Those are tricky questions that people will increasingly begin to ask. Now, he's justifying this delay by saying that there are various commissions set up. In fact, there are 10 commissions set up to propose reforms in constitution, laws, judiciary, the police, elections, etc., etc. So, it, it will depend one on the length of time these various commissions take and then they will file their suggestions for reforms and then there will be debate, de debate etc. At the same time in the same interview, he pushed back quite strongly when the interviewer asked him about attacks on Hindus in Bangladesh. And that was also following up on the tweet by Donald Trump, where he called the attacks on Hindus in Bangladesh barbaric and he compared the situation with Chaos. That is something to call the situation chaotic is something that some of the international media which is present in Bangladesh calls exaggerated. In fact, the economists called it a hyperbole on the part of Donald Trump. However, when the incoming president makes a statement like that, it worries somebody like Muhammad Yunus. So he has pushed back on it and he has said it is mostly propaganda. It is totally baseless propaganda it is unfortunate most of this propaganda originates from the indian side to keep this tension alive probably and then he again goes on to say in the same interview in reality it does not exist there were thousands of durga puja pandals set up and all the puja took place without any violence or any trouble at all however his challenges are much greater than this this happens with all these revolutionary changes because first you have the excitement of the revolution and then everything seems legit and looks like you're really moving into a golden era. And then the realities of life hit you. I've seen this happen, for example, in Assam, when the Assam agitators won their big campaign. They signed their accord with Rajiv Gandhi and won power by a very vast majority. After that, within months, they were downhill. And they've been downhill since then to the extent that they are completely, almost completely non-existent now. The leaders that mattered in that party, which was the party of the revolutionary leaders, that those leaders are now mostly, in fact, almost all in the BJP. So revolutions do tend to eat up, eat up their own children. And that is also something that the economist says in this article. You can see the top page on your screen. And they say that this revolution also could end badly because 
Yunus now has to give a proper timeline as to when he will hand over and to who and how. And second, if there is going to be delay, he must explain to people why there is delay. Otherwise, there will be questions raised and impatience on the street will grow. Because as I said, realities of life don't change. Some things in Bangladesh are not as bad as might be, as they might seem, particularly in some of the debate in India. For example, the economy. Exports have picked up. There was an initial view that exports will come down because most of Bangladesh's exports are garments and for some time garment factories were shut a couple were burnt also or damaged but no exports are up in the month of october merchandise exports from bangladesh were up 21 percent year on year which is very good also the economist tells us in another piece i will share this also with you that remittances are back now remittances are a very serious element in Bangladesh's foreign exchange incomes. Bangladesh's economy has had a foreign exchange problem. That's the reason they had gone to IMF. And at that time, I had said that they've gone to IMF proactively and just as well that they did. So they got $1.2 billion. They have another $4.7 billion under negotiation and on the line. So for them, it's very important that remittances keep going up and also that export growth is maintained. So those two things are foreign in place. What is not foreign in place is inflation. So food inflation in the same month of October was 13% year on year, which is really hurtful for a country of that per capita income. It is at the end of the day, a poor country. Second, it's growth rate, it's GDP growth rate, which was earlier running higher than India's for 2024 because of the instability. 2024, it finished at 5.8% and for 2025, IMF estimates it to fall to 5.4% because of instability, whereas Asian Development Bank only reckons it at 5.1%. If that happens, then the country or the economy is not growing fast enough to keep the impatience levels in control. Because what happens, we've seen this happen in Egypt, we've seen this happen in Syria, we've seen this happen in Libya. Now you might say this is a loaded allusion to all of these being Islamic countries as Bangladesh is an Islamic majority country. But the fact is when a large country loses its governance cohesion, then all kinds of forces and frustrations emerge. And Bangladesh is the third largest country in our subcontinent by way of population. But in comparison, it is much larger than Egypt, Syria, Libya, Iraq, probably even Turkey put together. So this is a very large country. So this is a very large population with a very low income. In the middle of all this, while for about a month, politics on the street had gone into a freeze or maybe two months, politics is coming back now because Sheikh Hasina is in India. She wrote a letter of congratulations to Donald Trump and see this letter. She signed that letter as Prime Minister of Bangladesh because remember, she had never resigned as Prime Minister of Bangladesh. And her choice, man chosen by her, is still the President of Bangladesh. So there is a lot of pressure on Muhammad Yunus from students and other radicals to fire his president. But now he knows that to do so, will invite more charges of high-handedness and may cause more instability. In this situation, BNP, that is Bangladesh Nationalist Party, founded by Zia Rahman and now led by Begum Khalida Zia, they carried out a protest in Dhaka on November 8, demanding an elected government. I had mentioned to you this tweet by Tariq Rahman, who is the vice chairman of the party, is also the son of Khalida Zia. I am only reading a couple of lines from it. Uh, you can read the rest on your screen. And I quote from the tweet, the more we delay democratic elections taking place in Bangladesh, the more the broken system instilled, that's what is written, not installed, but instilled, maybe it's a typo, instilled by Awami League for their own games will be exacerbated. We cannot move forward in building a better Bangladesh when society-wide issues in primary health care, education, agriculture, etc., 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 fester and he says that only an elected government can begin rebuilding the nation. So there are contrary pressures. So while BNP wants an early election, latest by June, and they say if this is not announced by February, if a timetable is not announced, we will carry out more regular protests. At the same time, 
Jamaat-e Islami at the other end of the spectrum. Jamaat-e Islami says that they are quite happy if this government takes another year doing so by the end of next year. Why? Because Jamaat was banned under Sheikh Hasina's government. They, their ban has been lifted. Jamaat in Bangladesh, for all practical purposes, is a face of the Muslim Brotherhood. They had been banned. Now they are legit. They want more. time and jamaat's leaders quite touchingly they've been talking about the need need of time to recover their own might because they've been a proscribed party for a long time and many of its leaders and founders have been tried and convicted and punished for excesses and human rights abuses in 1971 so so, so they so they want more time bnp wants less time in the middle mohammed yunus has to decide how long can he continue without these without these pressures rising because pressures are multiple radical demands include sack the president ban awami league if he does any of that or radical radical demands will include stop taking power from adani that is 10% of bangladesh's power can they afford to do it or or get out of water agreements with india can an interim government with no constitutional legitimacy get out of sovereign agreements signed by the republic of bangladesh those questions remain and those are questions that mohammed yunus will have to address and the longer he stays in the job the more the pressures on him will increase and the tougher it will become for him to resist them so what i will do is i will steal a line from the economist from the economist article thank you economist that's a line that they've written in the conclusion to their article and they are talking about how long will he govern and how will he hand over power and to who and they say and i quote their conclusion if he leaves it too late bangladesh's revolution could yet turn dark so a 100 days after a street revolution is a long time because a lot changes and now the meters really running and the costs are piling up that's the reason i thought it was important for us to talk about bangladesh today